Hey everyone, it's Zach, also known as Trading Aloha on Twitter. Today I want to give a brief overview of Portal Fantasy, which is another one of the upcoming games that's going to be launching on Avalanche. I'm going to cover what the game is and where you can find out more and how to get involved, as it's still early in the game's development, so you can be prepared for when it launches. But before we get started, let's take a look at the trailer that the team just released last week. Unhappy? Looking for some excitement in your life? We're going to blow your tiny mind! Huh? <laughs> fantasy! Welcome, hero! Wait, really? You're the hero? Well, time to scoot, little newt! Solve interesting puzzles! See spectacular landscapes! Get your butt walloped by our magnificent baubles! Baubles? They're just these cute little monsters who will try to murder you any chance they get, unless you capture them first. Don't mash buttons. What are you, a child? A monkey? It's like a dignified game of chess. Chess mixed with fencing and magic and monsters and, uh, energy drinks. Optimize your team. Take down epic enemies like this demonic psychopath. Capture all 100 baubles. Visit our amazing shops. Buy interesting items. Our shopkeepers are friendly sometimes. But, Portal Wanderer, I promise it's all worth it. Because if you're really good, you might become an architect. And rip apart time and space to create your own reality. That's right. Build your own maps and quests. Share your creations with other players. Then crush other players into fine powder. Become a god. Drive them from their homes. Turn their livestock into pillars of salt. Destroy the... We hope you enjoy your stay. Portal Fantasy! Portal Fantasy is going to be an upcoming browser-based, community-run pixel RPG that started to gain traction from investors both in the Web3 and Web2 communities. As you can kind of see on their website, you can see the list of who they're backed by. Uh, some of the bigger names being Makers Fun, Blizzard, you know, Avalabs isn't listed on there, but it's also one that's included. Uh, Avalanche, Keychain Capital, GFR Fun, and Infinity Ventures uh, Crypto. So there's quite a few guys pouring into this to help support the development and launch of this game. And I think it's one of going to be the, another one of the ones we look to that kind of changes what we saw uh, through the end of the bull run last year and something that can be sustainable and fun uh, within the Web3 space. And we'll walk through a bit of the white paper, but you know, after kind of reviewing their medium and their white paper and chatting in the Discord, uh, the developers are really trying to address some of the unsustainability issues we saw uh, towards the end of last year with the play to earn economy. Uh, the game's white paper claims that it's not gonna rely on user growth to reward players. And it's gonna try to merge some aspects of you know, a Pokemon based kind of creature catching uh, and battling and also some puzzle solving and quest building mechanics that you can approach in two different ways as a player and also as a, as a builder, or as they call them, architects, uh, that'll be responsible for creating additional maps, lore, uh, that will be rewarded with uh, in-game tokens as well. Uh, so that it closes that loop as far as uh, the earning capability. And we'll kind of show that uh, in their white paper as well as we kind of get to that point. Uh, the game's gonna feature a steady reward system for players to continue progressing and interacting with the game. Uh, and that's both from the architect side of you know, players building uh, maps for the uh, actual players, uh, as well as heroes uh, catching and, and playing the game and battling and exploring all those maps. Uh, so I think it's an interesting way to approach the current issues we see um, with some of the uh, play to earn games uh, throughout the ecosystem. So when we jump over to the white paper, we see there's really three areas that I want to focus on for the overview. And that's the gameplay of the three different uh, real types of players or ways you can approach the game. And that being the heroes and architects from a player point of view uh, and earning, and then the portables, uh, which is more of like the Pokemon type creatures. Uh, so first kind of hitting the heroes, you know, you, as you can see, kind of like a pixel based game, as you'd expect, um, the visuals kind of look exactly how I, I kind of depicted them in my mind when I first started thinking about the game. Uh, and you level them up using orbs uh, that you uh, collect from in-game rewards. And that's completely uh, an on on-chain uh, token uh, with an unlimited supply and then you've got the portal fantasy token which will be used you know, as the on-chain token uh, that we'll discuss kind of later but you can play the game without ever having to interact with the blockchain uh, which is always good to kind of bring in those free-to-play players that just want to enjoy the game uh, and then allow them to sync with a wallet kind of seamlessly uh, as if they get interested and want to buy the nfts or get more serious about uh, catching and upgrading their heroes or, or starting to build those maps 
Um, as a map builder, you will need, or as, a, as the architect, as they're called, uh, you will need an NFT to, to do that, uh, to build those maps. But as a hero, uh, just playing the game, you can do it as a free to play, which I think is excellent. And I don't, I don't really want to go into, you know, all the exploring and leveling uh, that you can do. I recommend that you jump over to the white paper on Portal Fantasy uh, and check it out because they are still in their pre-alpha phase right now. Uh, it's really an invite only um, and select individuals are testing it. Uh, we could see some tweaks and changes to uh, some of the aspects within the white paper. So I want to keep this uh, kind of at the wave top level uh, so you can you know get a taste for exactly what the game is going to be. And then if you're interested, I, I recommend you know jumping over to this white paper, which will drop a link below uh, or drop, jump into the discord, uh, which is fairly active as well. And you can ask questions there. Um, they do have a variety of you know platforms that they uh, that they talk on. So you can jump on their telegram. They've got a Reddit, Facebook. Uh, their medium is actually very well updated. Uh, I was going to push this video last week, but they did a, a, a quick FAQ update on, on the 24th that they released, which answered a lot of questions. Um, and so we'll drop a link down to that too as well. So they've done a really good job communicating exactly you know, what their intent is and the changes that they're making based on the feedback from some of those who've been invited to test the game out already. And then before jumping into the Porbles as the uh, Pokemon type creature, I just wanted to cover the other player uh, angle that can be taken here and that's the architect uh, and you can see kind of how they just describe it as you know a passive way to approach the game uh, where you can create maps and and you know ba you basically earn the orb from pe from other players using that map and by finishing the puzzles quests uh, and anything else that you as the architect created for them which i think is interesting here that they also highlight that you can create the custom dialogue for the npc and de designing your own titles uh, which I think is really interesting way to give creators that freedom to kind of create their own little world and own little storyline that they can take as far as they want. So, uh, you know, as an architect and a passive player, if you really enjoy like storytelling and, and building uh, worlds and um, just that side of the house in general, you could really take this uh, to the next level and kind of create your own storyline that builds upon itself and create multiple maps upon maps and on maps. And you can create your own little community uh, that players really become interested in and, and really want to play your maps uh, and lets you stand out as kind of a developer there. And every time you get players to come onto your map and finish your quests and, and battle it out and explore your, your custom world, a little maps that you create, uh, you earn orb, which it just, you know, a nice way to get rewarded for doing something you like to do anyway, uh, as, as along with it kind of building that community uh, within Portal Fantasy to enjoy the game. And I think that, you know, the team giving the architects that freedom uh, to really customize everything they wanted is exactly kind of what Web3 uh, is all about. And, and there's no real limit to it. So I, I love that aspect of it. And I think, you know, as a guy who loves RPG games and grew up playing them as well, uh, that aspect really appeals to me on the architect side. So I think I'll probably uh, try my hand at, you know, creating a couple of those worlds once they're, you know, maps as they're, uh, as they launch. Uh, just see how it, how it works out and just kind of create my own little dialogue and, and storyline. So if that's something you're interested in, I, I highly advise you to, you know, jump in the Discord early, maybe you know, talk to as many people as you can, uh, and then get involved as an architect as soon as it launches. And maybe you can be successful in kind of building your own little uh, player base as well. That helps, you know, grow the game as well as grow the community. Um, so that's the interesting part on, on the architect side. Uh, on the portable side, you know, this is the kind of the Pokemon-like uh, um, aspect of the game where, you know, they can be caught, battled, trained uh, by the heroes. Uh, you can sync these as a unique NFT asset that can be traded across wallets uh, and sold as well, I believe. Um, so it's just interesting. And you can kind of click through this. There's a lot of different um, things on the portables, you know, as to, you know, exactly what type of classes they can be with water, fire, lightning, all that. Uh, their stats that go up to 100, the same with the player levels. And then, of course, there's always rarities when we talk about NFTs. Uh, and portables anyway. So, you know, you can see some examples there at the bottom of the different kinds there are, um, the different uh, ways you can encounter them, which can be anywhere from just randomly exploring and, and to running into uh, other uh, baddies or other trainers, as they call them. Uh, if you run into these baddies, they can have up to three portables uh, that you can fight it out with and capture. And to do that, you'll need a capture scroll that you can buy um, in game from uh, some of the locations. Uh, within the game that we can talk about once we get closer to launch. Uh, but I do like the way this is, it appeals to something that's already been successful uh, in the in the Web 2 side. Uh, so it just adds that element into this game that I really do enjoy. 
And I think a lot of people do. And, and this is something that it can be easily um, attract players that know exactly kind of how it works to do these type of things on the Pokemon side. Um, so on the Portal Fantasy side, uh, it's really just a seamless transition and just learning the new uh, techniques and, and things that are, you know, a part of Portal Fantasy only. So I, I love it. I think that, that this is a, is a good kind of combination here. And then as with most successful games, we've got, you know, a lot of interaction from the developers that, you know, bring in special events into the equation uh, to keep the th keep the content changing and keep players engaged. Um, so they've already committed to a couple of different kind of things or special quests where you can earn them in game that are given from, from the NPCs within the city. Uh, there's going to be special maps that will include rare drops, everything from portables to different items and rewards that can only be unlocked with orb. They'll also have live events that they're going to host that will rotate. Um, that were required to own special portables so that will drive, you know, more capture uh, attempts out in the wilderness. If you're going to need that portable to complete these live ops to earn the rewards. And then they also got, you know, a thing called hero minis, which are replicas uh, of the either the animals, the portables or the NFTs within the game. Um, they don't they can't interact or attack with anything, but they're used as an achievement um, system, uh, much like we see things like, um, you know, Call of Duty uh, calling cards and emblems being unlocked for achievements. So. Similar to that, you can keep it, you know, in your inventory, you can summon them and dismiss them at any time. Um, so I think that's kind of just one little interesting aspect that rewards, you know, players that complete certain objectives and it keeps, it keeps players driving towards, you know, wanting to be successful in the game. On the item side of the house, you, know, you can buy, you know, your hero or architect items from the Black Magic Cat Shop, which includes the capture scrolls that kind of we talked about. Uh, that were, are needed to, you know, capture the poor bulls once you weaken them enough and they enter uh, the capturable state. Um, and then as, you know, as you progress through the game, you'll need stronger capture scrolls uh, to capture the more stronger poor bulls, which just makes sense. Uh, and then you've got, you know, of course, your potions, your bombs that damage other poor bulls. And then, you know, uh, as, you know, supply and demand kind of rolls through the day, uh, I like how they added this little element in here, you know, as people want to buy uh, potions and, and the supply starts dwindling down, uh, they're going to exponentially ri raise the price throughout the day uh, if they're bought in succession. So uh, you can either want to buy them when they're low in the morning uh, and then wait till the next day at 12 a.m. UTC when the time resets. Uh, I see this potentially be an issue in the future, just depending on how it plays out. Um, and I'm sure we'll see some tweaks to that uh, within the marketplace as the game launches and players start buying and selling things. Uh, just so that there's no like exploits of people buying early, selling later, uh, or how that's going to work. So I like the idea, and I think that's an interesting way to kind of control the price uh, as supply and demand rolls through. But uh, we'll see how they they tweak that uh, going forward. And so to briefly touch on the, the the two token system here for the economy, first just wanted to hit on the actual you know in-game currency orb, uh, which has been mentioned a bunch of times here. Uh, basically, it's uh, off-chain and only be in-game. Uh, it, it's rewarded through, you know, battles, leveling up, completing maps, defeating baddies, quests, completing special events. Um, for architects, as we kind of talked about, you're rewarded when players play your map uh, or they capture portables on your architect maps. Um, even if you make maps that aren't played a lot by the heroes, um, I, I believe it said in the white paper and, and on the Discord that someone asked this question, um, you'll still be rewarded experience at, uh, uh, and orb to level up your architect skills, um, but just not as much. Uh, the more players that use your map and play and, and capture portables on your on your maps that you created, the more you'll earn. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're building your maps to try to put the best effort you can forth um, to make sure that the players want to play it. And then, of course, the way you use uh, orbs in game um, is for leveling, capturing, purchasing heroes, purchasing items, uh, unlocking new tile sets for the creator compass. Um, so basically everything you need to play the game is going to be done off chain. Um, which is great uh, to keep, you know, the free to play uh, model alive uh, and keep new players interested in wanting to test it out, but also allows you the opportunity to kind of move to the portal fantasy token, uh, which has a caps uh, fixed supply of about 1 billion. And it's going to launch on avalanche the whole reason that we're recovering it today. Um, and you don't really, need, you don't need it if you just want to play, but uh, if you enjoy it, uh, you, you can buy the, the PFT token and it has three main uses. Uh, the first being membership access where you can lock up, uh, some of your PFT, that's that number to be determined on exactly what uh, that number is and what it grants you. Uh, but you'll get additional rewards and um, unique experiences while playing the game. So I'm sure that'll be you know kind of broken down more as we get closer to launch. 
Uh, and then there'll also be, uh, PFT is gonna be used to purchase uh, cosmetic skins and other upgrades for both the, the heroes and the architects. Uh, what those will be, it'll be interesting to see kind of as those release as we get closer, uh, but you'll need it to you know unlock, especially on the architect side, certain tile sets um, that'll make maps the most appealing uh, to heroes. So something to keep an eye on, it's going to you know run on its own you know, subnet, the portal fantasy chain, uh, which is great. So PFT is gonna be the gas token for that. Um, so that'll be a, another way to get involved since it is a cap supply uh, as the game continues to be played. Um, the supply will continue to go down uh, after a certain time. So uh, just keep an eye on, on the PFT token, especially as, as a, its own native subnet. Uh, I think that's an interesting way to approach uh, both sides of the on and off chain economy here. Well, the last part I really want to touch on before we kind of wrap up this overview is um, the, the Medium article they released on 24 November, and we'll leave that down below too, so you can jump right to this to kind of answer um, some of the, the co most common questions that they get. Uh, but if you're interested in trying to help like, sh like shape the future of the game and, and work with the developers, uh, one of the questions I always look for is, you know, are they act are they looking for other people to come test uh, the alpha or the pre-alpha or the beta? And they specifically answered, how do you become a play tester? Uh, and will there be a public beta question on, on the article they released on November 24th? Basically, if you want to get involved, jump in the Discord as soon as you can, uh, and then just start, you know, learning the material, uh, learning the, the games, being active in the community, uh, and you know they're going to start reaching out to players as they get closer uh, to what they would consider a public beta, uh, and they continue to add, you know, people along the way to their their pre-alpha as they go because they want to make the changes to make the game right, make the game fun uh, first and foremost. Um, so it's excellent if you're if you've been involved in any type of RPG, pixel game, Pokemon S games in the past, uh, and you want to help out and you know give some feedback and some pointers and you know pros and cons of what actually works and what doesn't, uh, jump in the Discord and become a contributor and a leader. Uh, and I, I'm sure the team will will easily see that and reach out to you and invite you to jump in uh, and be one of those public beta testers when the time comes. Um, I like the fact that they're not allowing everybody in there because. You know, as the you know developing team is starting to incorporate these changes, they don't want to be overwhelmed um, with a bun bunch of different uh, data points. Um, so I, I love that uh, here as well. Uh, I haven't had the time to give this a solid play test yet uh, I, and jump in and be active as I want. Uh, I plan to be going forward because I'm very interested to see how this kind of shapes out uh, when we get closer to launch. Uh, and then they kind of break down as well at the bottom, you know, what are the new discords? Uh, and, and, you know, how are they rolled within within the Discord server so you can figure out who's who. Um, and then basically they just run uh, their links to Twitter, Discord, Telegram, and they answer some other questions on, you know, is the game playable? What makes it unique? Uh, which we've kind of talked about um, as, a, as a creature collecting, quest building, uh, pixel RPG. Um, and then, you know, they continue to release articles on their medium regularly um, as, as well as building the lore to the game. Uh, if you jump kind of over to their link tree, uh, you can see exactly what they offer, which uh, one thing I did I did like, uh, I don't see other games doing, is kind of taking the lore to the next level. Uh, and they have this web comic uh, that has two, um, I believe it's two, two episodes now uh, that they've released over the last uh, you know, 14, 20, 20 days or so. Uh, and it's just fun. You know, it kind of builds up the anticipation of the game and helps you, you know, understand the history and the lore. Uh, and exactly why things are the way they are within Portal Fantasy. So, you know, if you're interested, give it a read. I know a lot of people are very interested in that kind of stuff when it comes to uh, RPG games. They really get into the storyline, and it's not just a jump in uh, and try to earn as much as you can. It's, a, you know, enjoy the game from start to finish, and you can start enjoying it before it's even released. Uh, so I, I love the fact, the fact that the team has done that and started to push those out uh, weekly, which is great. So we'll see if they push out uh, Episode 3. Uh, here this week, which would be the, uh, seven days after the last one. Um, so that's really it. I just wanted to cover on the wave top levels for Portal Fantasy this week uh, as just another you know look at other games that are coming on the Avalanche uh, network and and within their on their own subnet at that too. Um, you know, as we see you know, still uh, the macro picture not looking so hot. It's nice to see teams using this time to do exactly what we're supposed to do in, in a bear market, and that's build uh, and and to improve upon. Uh, the issues that we saw in the last bull run uh, as GameFi kind of rose to this hyped Ponzi-esque uh, era. And now we're trying to figure out how do we make Web3 legitimate uh, and fun to play? Because that's the key. Everyone wants to make money, sure. Uh, but at the end of the game, if at the end of the day, if you're a true gamer uh, and you just want to play a game that's fun, uh, 
it would be better to just play a game on Web3 instead of going and shelling out uh, 60, 80, 90, 100 bucks uh, to Web2 games that are just going to disappear. So we need games that are willing to step up and you know focus on fun, playability, and, and easy understanding to help onboard new players. And as, as more games are successful in doing that, then we'll see the Web3 uh, game five space continue to grow. So I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one and all the other games that are coming out on Avalanche. Uh, and hopefully this has been a, another look at one that might interest you. And if it does, uh, please give it a like uh, and subscribe to the channel because that helps us keep pushing out this type of content. Uh, give me a follow over on Twitter and reach out anytime at Trading Aloha. Uh, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Oh, 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 oh,